I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Invest in News Network, and here today with me is Frank Trotter, President of Battle Financial. Thank you so much for being here today with me. Great to see you. Oh, it's fantastic. Thank you. Great. So we're here at the Rural Symposium, and you're here talking about Battle Bank. Mm -hmm. I wondered if we could start off with a quick overview of what it is exactly for people who might not be familiar. Sure. Well, we're in the process of building something called Battle Bank. Yeah. You know, it's really building on our long legacy of banking with Mark Twain Bank in the 80s uh, and then Everbank through the 2000s. Uh, we uh, launched Everbank uh, as one of the first internet banks and then ultimately sold that to TIAA in 2017. Uh, Rick Rule and I got to talking and thought that there might be an opportunity to get back in the market, so we're building Battle Bank. Perfect. So. I imagine that building a bank is a pretty lengthy process, and you don't have to get into all mm -hmm. the details, but I wondered if you could go through that process a little bit. Well, I think there's a number of different things. You know, a lot of our friends will ask us, well, what do you do to build a bank? Yeah. And it's, well, there's a big project list, but, you know, fundamentally there's two or three different things. One, of course, capital. Uh, and we're always raising capital, as banks always do. Uh, two is the technology uh, that's behind it. So we have to be able to present to our clients, keep track of things, undertake security and so on. And then getting great people. And we've been very fortunate to get a lot of our team back from Everbank and from another institution called Solera National Bank in Colorado. Super experienced people uh, looking forward to uh, building the bank out. And so it's really a process of people, technology, capital, and of course a plan. Um, and hopefully we have the plan uh, down well and we're executing on it now. Right. So I was, of course, reading through your website before we did this interview, and mm -hmm. I think it's clear that Battle Bank is going to be quite different from traditional banks. Mm -hmm. Could you go through some of the issues you see with traditional banking? Well, it was interesting. You know, when we started Everbank 20 years ago, we kind of looked out at the landscape, and we saw mostly the big banks not paying any interest, charging fees, poor customer service. And what's amazing is 20 years later, that's really the same. I uh, did a little survey last week, and on checking accounts, Bank of America is paying 0.02%, uh, Chase is paying 0.01, and Schwab is really leading the pack at a 0.15. I think if we were to launch today, we'd probably be at 1.2%. So it's a different value proposition entirely, and each of those accounts can come with a pretty hefty fee per month. You know, one of our guys uh, always likes to say, well, at the end of the year, do you go into your bank and give them a $300 check? No, you just soon not do that, but that's exactly what you're doing with some of the big banks. And I think we have an opportunity to convince people to come over to battle and out of those other institutions. So, of course, to, to start a bank, you need to raise a lot of capital. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. How have you been doing that so far? Well, there's a couple of different things. So far, we've done private placements with you know, highly accredited investors, and we're doing very well there. We've had uh, two, one round complete, another round in process. Uh, but really, we're getting excited that we announced yesterday uh, that will be opening the offering to a broader audience. Uh, individuals will still have to be accredited, and you can go to our website and click on the Invest in Us tab. Follow that process through, and if you are certified accredited, <coughs> then we will get a notification, and we will e email you the information to be able to participate, possibly, in uh, Capital for Battle Bank. So this is part three of a, of a four-part plan to raise the capital to open the doors. Right. So as we've been learning, you have a long history in the banking business. Mm -hmm. I know you kind of just said that things haven't changed a lot in the last decades, but are there any changes that oh, you sure. can speak to? There are a lot of massive amount of changes. Of course, I started a long time ago in 1981 when Prime was 21 and a half, and uh, it was a very different world. But, you know, obviously technology is number one. And I think the, when we launched Everbank, it was eight years before the iPhone. Uh, so it was before people were familiar with technology on a, on a broad basis. Um, to the technology itself that helps us to create a good customer experience, keep track of the money, provide the security, is pretty much all cloud-based now, which is much more secure. It's not like we have to defend 100 servers across multiple offices uh, to, to accomplish the task. Um, and I think people's attitudes have changed. Um, you know, they're used to online shopping, and particularly after the pandemic, um, even more people are com comfortable with uh, going online, doing a transaction, and handling their financial affairs in that manner. You know, whether they're at a broker-dealer now or not, uh, they're doing that online. And I think that's been fabulous. Yeah, and you know, so in addition to people becoming more comfortable working online, I think that 
Battle Bank is arriving at kind of the perfect time given mm. all the turmoil that's going on. You know, we were talking about interest rates, what can people get on their savings? People are worried about that. They mm -hmm. want to be able to preserve their purchasing power. I know that the future, of course, is hard to predict, but these, these circumstances economically, is there anything you can say about where we're heading? <laughs> well, a couple of things. One, we feel really good about that because as larger uh, interest rates are in play, it just makes us more attractive. Um, so with the Fed raising 75 basis points yesterday, um, I imagine that 1.2 is even in the, uh, in the review mirror. It's probably higher at this point in time, and that makes people more excited. Um, you know, if rates are higher, I think that's uh, fine. Uh, we have to get through the turmoil, and it will, you know, at some point we do have to have a recession. It um, hasn't sort of gotten away without it for 10 plus years. Um, and that doesn't really bother us. I think that just gives people more of an opportunity to bring their uh, funds and uh, earnings to at Battle Bank, and, and we're, we're happy with that. Right, and I don't know how much you can say about future offerings, but mm -hmm. can you go over a little bit about some of the products. Sure, and of course some of this stuff's right out on our battlebank.com website. Uh, so we certainly will have uh, high value uh, checking and savings products. You know, top D style of rates nationwide. Uh, that's the e sort of the easy thing. We'll have precious metals offering if you want to buy, sell, gold, silver, platinum, palladium. We can have it delivered to you, we'll store it for you. Variety of different options there. Uh, we'll provide deposits, FDIC insured deposits in foreign currencies. Uh, so if you want to buy Euro, Yen, Renminbi, Australian dollar, and hold that. We'll pay interest uh, indicative of the local currency. And a lot of people like to diversify cash portfolios there. And market index uh, CDs where you have principal protection and a market rate of return based on that. So that's all on the deposit side. I think one of the unique things we'll be doing is lending against precious metals. Uh, people like a little liquidity in their gold or silver or platinum or palladium and there's really not a lot of options. Uh, and we're excited about uh, being able to do that in a secure way from our perspective and still provide people liquidity. Right, so I, this all sounds really interesting. I think though that you know, people, people may not be happy with their current banks right now. I think that's definitely true. But they might be hesitant about switching to something mm -hmm. brand new. So what would you say to people who are a little bit hesitant? Well, I think a couple of different things. One, we don't have a legacy balance sheet with problems. You know, this is a tough market right now, and I imagine some of the banks will have a little difficulty. Uh, two, we're going to be exceptionally heavily capitalized, and we've committed to not do derivatives trading. We'll use it to hedge our, our, our balance sheet, certainly. Uh, but if you look at some of the big banks, I think Chase had reported $60 trillion in derivatives at the end of the last quarter. It's a lot. Uh, I think that scares a lot of people. And three, of course, there's FDIC insurance. You know, first $250,000 uh, is insured by the FDIC, and that's a great thing. Uh, so I think people can take comfort in that. And I think a lot of the people know us. Um, we certainly have a lot of old Everbank customers that are coming up here at this conference and saying, I'm ready, just tell me, and I'll be over. Well, and of course, that's the key question, right? Mm -hmm. So I know you have a sign-up uh, tab on the website. Mm -hmm. When do you expect this to be up and running? It's hard to say. I mean, there's, you know, the three different pieces have to come together, uh, capital and um, technology, and then, of course, our approvals from our regulators. And, and none of those are exact science. I think you've probably been around technology long enough that when somebody promises something next Tuesday, it's probably three weeks from Tuesday. And so we have to work through all those elements. Um, and, you know, we'll get it up as soon as possible, and we'll keep people informed if they just click in there on the wait list. And, uh, we'll give them an email from time to time and even ask them some questions. You know, what do you think about product names? What do you think about design? What are some of the interesting things you'd like to see? So that really allows you to become part of the community by joining the wait list. Well, that's great. So if you get in now, you can you can actually kind of influence the direction. Of Could well be. Right. Yeah, we might listen. Yeah, we'd be Maybe. happy to. <laughs> okay, that's great. Well, thank you for going through all this. Do you have any other final thoughts that you would share with our investor audience? Well, I think you know it's been a very exciting. Um, you know, Rick Rule and myself uh, started putting this together about about eighteen months ago in the first thought process. And uh, we're excited to get this out the door. Rick's very excited about it, and I think we're going to have a great opportunity here at Battle Bank. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for coming to speak with me today. Great to hear from you. And once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is Frank Trotter with Battle Financial.